Okay, we're doing a series on, on fly fishing in the surf. Today we're going to cover flies for fishing in the surf. And fishing in the surf could entail a lot of different species. Could be uh, snook, which is probably the, the fish that are sought after the most, most people are fishing for. But that it also means Spanish mackerel, bluefish, ladyfish, jack creval, and even tarpon. So we'll cover some flies for, for some of those fish. And we'll do it partly by species, but also by this type of bait that you're going to encounter, which is going to include glass minnows, pilchards, greenies, and mullet. We'll do glass minnows now. One of the most popular flies overall, and, and certainly a, one that does well when the fish are in glass minnows, as, as it does with a lot of other uh, bait as well, is the clouser minnow. Uh, can use anything like this being chartreuse and white, olive and white, brown and white, uh, all white. Those are all good bets for fishing in the surf, particularly around glass minnows. Fly gets down with the lead eye, gets down underneath the glass minnows where the fish usually are, uh, and it's a very effective fly. And you can tie it in a variety of sizes. Typically, for imitating glass minnows, something from a number four hook up through maybe a number one, much bigger than that probably going to be bigger than the glass minnows would be. So keep it in that size range and you'll, you'll most likely do quite well with that fly. Next, a fly that's uh, very durable, so it's excellent for species like Spanish mackerel and bluefish, is this Popovic Surf Candy, which is used as a synthetic hair in the back. And in the case of this one, has some fly foils here and then an epoxied head. So it's very durable, uh, particularly toothy fish like, like Spanish and bluefish don't tear this up. This particular one's tied back on the hook shank to provide a little more bite protection from something like a Spanish that, that's prone to clip it right in front of the head and thus cut your fly off. This little extended hook shank tends to uh, alleviate some of that problem. That's a very good imitation of a glass minnow, which glass minnows sort of a generic term, but the most common bait that is called a glass minnow is a bay anchovy. And this, another uh, fly from, uh, from Rio here, it's called a Just Keep Swimming. And this coloration with white on the bottom, sort of a coppery reddish brown for the back, does a good job of imitating glass minnows. You see a big school, a big wad of glass minnows, typically they have a reddish brown color in the water. This does a pretty good job of imitating that color of that, and that's size-wise a pretty pretty good bet for uh, you know for what the size of most glass minnows are. And then finally, this is a um, uh, glades minnow, and again olive and white, olive back, white white belly, and water pretty durable, not bad, sinks fairly well, fairly easy to cast. That's another good bet for. Uh, all of those species when they're in the glass minnows. Then glass minnows will, will be fed on by all those species. So those should get you covered when they're on the glass minnows. Next bait fish that's important is really two different bait fish, which is a pilchard or a scaled sardine, or what's called greenies, which is a threadfin herring. Uh, very similar, generally speaking, greenies or a threadfin herring are a bit bigger than pilchards on average. Um, Pilchards can be very small, you know, less than two inches long, or, and, and greenies can get to be certainly six or seven inches long. But they both similar flat-sided, uh, white bellies with greenish backs, um, and a, a really popular bait fish, uh, particularly snook, I think, like pilchards about as much as they do anything. Uh, they'll, they'll hang around those things as much as anything they get. Um, the good news is the same flies really work well for either species. You just t tie the same fly in different sizes and you can mimic whatever bait you get. Um, these are a very important bait and sometimes you'll see the greenies in mixed in with glass minnows so sometimes if you're fishing for something like a tarpon that may not want to eat something or hard to get their attention with something as small as a, a glass minnow fly if you throw a greeny looking fly in there where there's oftentimes greenies they'll eat that and I've, I've caught a hook tarpon with those 
Um, the top fly is a, on the list there is a polar fiber minnow. Comes in a couple of sizes. That chartreuse and white or electric yellow and white color works really well. The polar fiber moves a lot, a lot of undulation. That's a very good fly. The second one is a bush pig, uh, sort of an olivey, uh, greenish, olive, yellowish back color. That works quite well also for the for the for the pilchards. Uh, the third one in that list there is an EP pilchard. Uh, that's a small one and a one aught. They make them one aught, two aught, three aught. So that bigger one works well for a bigger greenie. And then the uh, fourth one there, the deadly deceiver. That fly in particular is really good for toothy fish like a Spanish mackerel because the fibers are very stiff and tough and durable, not not prone to get shredded up by a toothy fish like that. And if you notice that particular one on the photo has got some wire on it too, particularly for dealing with mackerel. Next species of, of, of bait fish that we're going to talk about are croakers. Croakers, or Atlantic croakers, is a small fish and sort of in the, I think in the drum family, but they, they make a drumming sound. So they're particularly attractive to, you know, a lot of, a lot of sp stuff, but, but particularly to snook. Snook really like croakers for whatever reason, whether it's that noise or whatever it is, they really like croakers. And so with those, we, we, there's a few different baits that will in, be indicative of that. And this time of year, you'll see a lot of small croakers right up in the trough, right close. And the snook definitely go, go for those. They, that's a, a preference of theirs, without a doubt. The top fly there is a uh, uh, just add water uh, 3D mullet in the uh, anchovy and brown color. And that does a pretty good job of, of mimicking the colors of, a, of an Atlantic croaker. Uh, the two below that are both sort of custom game changers to look like a croaker, sort of that, that anchovy brown color scheme. Uh, those have done really well for snook, you know, particularly like I said, in close in, in near the trough. That's where those croakers tend to live. So this time of year especially you want to have something in that box, particularly if you don't see a lot of bait fish along the shore. If you're, if you're in an area where you really feel like there's some snook and whatnot, but you're not seeing much bait that, that's, that's necessarily making the fish feed, you throw the, you know, a, a croaker in there might be one of your best bets. That's, uh, th those are not schooling fish in general. They're small fish that are scattered up and down, and, but when those snook see them, they pounce them. So that's a, a definite one for snook uh, anglers to want to have in their box. Lastly, as far as species of bait fish that's of importance, and one that's very important, is mullet. Mullet come in a variety of sizes from what they call a finger mullet, which is the size of your finger, to a really big silver mullet that could be 12 inches long. Uh, everything eats mullet, it, during, it seems like, during that time when those mullets start to migrate down, which is going to be the latter part of summer and the beginning of fall, they start to come out of the inlets and migrate down the coastline and in big schools, and particularly tarpon really just go after them, but so do snook and other species. Uh, these bait fish tend to swim a little faster than some of the other ones we've dealt with, so sometimes when you see those on the beach, you're gonna have to walk further and faster to keep up with them as fish are you know, beating them up and they're continuing to try to make their migration south. You're gonna have to walk and get, get in front of them or even drive to get in front of them sometimes. Um, but they are very important. Uh, bait fish on the coast. There are several flies that work well for that. Most of them are going to be tied on a size hook from size one aught all the way up to a four or five aught hook if you were looking for something really big to indicate those bigger silver mullet. Um, the top fly on that uh, list there is a, is a game changer that works really well, particularly for the bigger fish, the bigger tarpon and whatnot. That one's uh, can be tied out in smaller sizes as well that's that's better for snook but that bigger one works well for the bigger mullet when they're for the tarpon when they're on bigger mullet second fly down is a an enrico puglisi mullet pattern and you can see it's got a little tail to it that works quite well also for for the being uh, for imitating the bigger mullet that we get which usually we get the smaller mullet first and then the bigger mullet show up so that's when the tarpon thing starts to really get cranking. 
third one down is another uh, smaller version of that EP uh, mullet or EP finger mullet in that case. Good size for snook. You get the uh, get the smaller finger mullet up in the in the trough and around the inlets and whatnot. And the snook, uh, particularly anywhere where there's any structure, they're they're pounding away on those things. It's a, a fun time, and you'll see cartwheeling snook up and down the beach when they get on those on those finger mullet. And then the last one is a just add water 3D finger mullet in the gray and white color. Again, that's the color scheme that you'll generally see mullet in. Is that sort of olivey grayish back with a white belly and uh, those are a little bit bigger fly than some of the others in general uh, but the fish do when, when they key on the mullet they'll that they'll want that over just about anything so here's a selection of flies for snook on the beach that and you're going to catch other fish as well at the same time you're going to catch ladyfish and spanish mackerel other things but most people are targeting snook and this selection of flies works really well for snook covers a, a, a range of bait fish from from uh, glass minnows to pilchards and greenies and and finger mullet and, and and croakers as well so like i said if you see one or another type of bait around you're going to want to try to match that if not uh, you may throw something like one of those game changers that looks like a croaker or that uh, 3d finger mullet in the brown and anchovy that looks like a croaker because that's that's a, a prime bait for them, so uh, never a bad call if you don't see a particular any particular bait fish on the beach. For tarpon on the beach, you're gonna obviously need a bigger fly, a bigger hook to be able to handle that fish, and also to get his in, you know to attract his interest. Uh, typically, in the schools of glass minnows, I've had my best luck with the uh, black and purple game changer flies, uh, either on a two aught or a three aught size. Uh, they show up well in that uh, mass of glass minnows where there's not much light penetration through, you know, with that darker fly. Uh, use the same flies when they're in the mullet, uh, which just typically bigger, as much as a four odd or even five odd fly, a really big game changer to attract their attention when they're in those schools of mullet. I'll use that color or I'll use a more of a natural mullet color, kind of a gray and white. I also use the EP flies, both black and purple, or chartreuse and white, uh, and also in the mullet, the more natural mullet color. But for tarpon, obviously, you need a pretty big bait to really get their attention. If you try to throw them something that's the size of a glass minnow, and there's a million of them in there, the chances of them picking yours are pretty slim. So you need something to get their attention. Uh, any questions, obviously, you can get a hold of us, and uh, we'll, we'll guide you along. Thanks.